So we're trying to understand why humans inherit disease. Humans are the most studied mammal in the planet, but we still don't have enough information to understand which parts of the genome are, are causing these problems. And so we're really looking for the regulatory elements that tell the cells how they interact together. Those are the bits we're targeting. So if we sequence 240 mammals, we can look at the positions where those mammals are the same and predict that those are the regulatory elements. We then focus there. Jennifer Meadows is one of the researchers in the Zoonomia project. The researchers have studied the genomes of 240 mammal species, including the human species. One of the goals is to study hereditary disease in humans and in animals. It's been a massive collaboration across many, many continents. People have been donating samples from endangered species as well as less endangered species like cats and dogs. And then we align the genomes, which is a massive computational task. So we're combining this constraint or these regions that are conserved across mammals with all of the data that's available for humans. So we can understand how frequently they change across populations. We know some positions that make you sick. And so we can compare our data with that data to understand how they relate and then predict what may make someone ill in the future. Professor Shastin Lindblad too started the project in 2015. So there are very many common diseases such as schizophrenia or cancer uh, where it's hard to find the elements in the genome that actually cause the disease. What we know is that most of these regions fall outside protein coding regions. So we have 1% of the genome giving proteins but we have maybe 10% of the genome giving instructions of when a protein should be made in, in which tissue at which time point. So here we are trying to address the problem that we cannot find exactly which mutations cause disease. So by looking at the Zoonomia project data, we can see positions in the genome that are sa the same over a hundred million year of evolution. They are probably functional and are therefore these regulatory elements that de determine when proteins are made. We are looking for positions that are very similar across species because they are likely functional. But we are also looking for positions that have changed a lot because those can be adaptations that make us uniquely human. For cancer, we can see that the mutations in those regulatory elements, not just in the protein coding sequence, can actually determine which genes run amok and cause the cancer. Actually, these new findings are already being used in cancer research. Professor Karin Forsberg Nilsson's research group is doing research on brain tumours that affect children. These brain tumours are malignant and are called medulloblastomas. We are trying to find new ways to uh, be able to treat the tumour better or maybe diagnose them better with the help of cancer genomics. It started with a genomic analysis of the 240 mammals to be able to pinpoint the positions in the genome that has been conserved over millions of years of evolution. If mutations in cancer occur in an evolutionary conserved position, we have reasons to believe that they are more functional for the tumor. Maybe these mutations, or at least a part of them, will make the tumor grow faster or potentially respond differently to uh, a treatment. So that's why we have to go from the, um, from the computers to the cell lab and see if the hypothesis that we have formed will uh, actually be true when we test them on cells. We culture medulloblastoma cells that come from patients with medulloblastoma, the brain tumor, and treat them in different ways to see if these mutations will give them an advantage to grow or maybe being able to resist treatment. The researchers in the Zoonomia project hope that their unique data set will prove useful both for understanding evolution and for understanding disease in humans and animals. What's important is that this data is available not just for humans, it can be applied to any of our mammalian species. So when we use dogs to find disease genes, so cat, dogs get cancer, humans get cancer, dogs get diabetes, humans get diabetes. And so we can use this research both to understand the canine genome and the human genome, and that's really important when we are trying to help understand disease both in dogs and humans. 
Well, actually, it's available online, so anyone in the community can use it and intersect their clinical data with the information that we've found to predict what might be happening in their patients. It's a bit off yet to use in the clinic, but it's on its way there.